Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh. Validation shit. Look, look, look. Validated 29 back on the line. It's the return of the lock that's right on the grind. Moving through the open scope, still packing iron. Picked up a little weight, fat around the gills, but my mind still tight, sharp, double S still. Watch you, I fuck with. Whisper and a hand sign. Few cats and questions, treat them like a landline. Stop that. Calibrate the joint. 10 30, catch you up. Validation points. Only point, not the obvious. Eyes right, looking soft. Whole block effect, the bus suffering. Hoof and mouth, out the pounce to match the blast. Haters with the cannon now. Soldiers at attention. Four o'clock, stand and count. Lifted off a solid deep feed and bust a sour crowd. Look. Monster Cody in this motherfucker, check it out. Look, 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 off the top, check me out. I'm kosher like a synagogue, a bob and weave, yeah, better off eating fentanyl and fucking with me. I stand still, make the earth move, establish the jig, represent the realignment, consolidated, power base, soldier getting in, rest getting the tax rate, soldier getting in, rest getting the tax rate, fuck going home early, we gon' ride to the max day, had these niggas thinking like titties when they lactate. Look, check it out. I'm here with Kev Mack in this motherfucker. I got my elder in this motherfucker. I come from good stock. South Central. Off the block. Look, uh, uh. West side. Check me out. Look, look. Check me out. Look. Six to the nine time line with the gang shit. We wasn't thick, was the way to the way it was. My cousin Bloods, Levi's, khaki suits, silver satin leather jackets, ace deuce. We used to kill shit, time cross record hops. Chops is hot, team 29 on the block. Wasn't no Glock, clack rocks, or no boom box. Homies got down wherever they got mad at. Bides and that's just a bad motherfucking cast. Rocking the full slow stepping with their wings back. Biscuits and Romeos, croco sacks, all that. I'm telling y'all, when Q's fall up in the party, party hard. Hard with his chest out and got it started. Then what we did with them zip guns wasn't right. Sipping on night train, dipping rags in kryptonite. Slap boxing, knocking nuts out the box. Hands like rocks, muscles bulging out of slingshots. Found a bit of power, then we started hanging quick. For over 50 years, banging in this crip shit. Uh, 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 uh. Monster go to get Mac from Rolling Sixes in this motherfucker. Uh, Monster from Gangster. Q's OG Magnificent 7 Original West Side Crip. Found this shit. We come from good stock. South Central Los Angeles. Motherfuckers can't stand us. <laughs> For sure. That was hard, homie. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed our day together. It was a quality day. It was a good day. And, uh, you know, I want to send my props out and my respects to the family of Big Bob. I want Real talk, uh, man. the brothers that yes, passed away yes, from sir. the 60s, the two we lost from the 60s Who's for that? natural causes. What were their names? Comer. Mr. Comer, Smokey Joe, Kenny Mack. We sent our props out to your family. Kenny Mack? Yeah. From the comrades, that dude? And Big Bob. Oh, Big Mad Bob, Mad you know. You know who you were, Big Bob, and Big Bob's yeah, sure. family. He yeah. was a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a little kid, I'd be on the Western bus, Ricardo Sims, and I would see Big Baycott. Bob, Baycott, Pushing strolling up and down the Western. Hawk. And the Hawk, all of them, man. The Hawk had the feet and the speed and the hurdle, hurdle speed. And those were just brothers, man, that I grew up looking at. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. So, you, know, I, I, you know, you rest in peace and your family much love. Me and myself, I've been beefing with death since I was 11. Me and Def did beef. I mean, Def came for me, man, like two or three, sometimes, I think it's eight times now. I'm serious, man, all BS aside, man. I didn't got pushed up on Def since I was a child. One time, all BS aside, when the beef first started, it wasn't even about game banging. It wasn't even about me out there activating myself. My sister asked me to climb up on, in, on the garage and get her a Michael Jackson album. And I climbed up there, and the people who owned the house before us had left a big ass hook up there, and I didn't see it, and I slipped, and that hook got me up on his arm. And I was hanging on that motherfucker like a piece of meat. And I didn't know if that shit was through my artery or not, that shit was squeaking blood. And my older brother came in and lifted me up off of there, man. I was hollering like a motherfucking cat. But that's when the beef started. So I said, okay, this motherfucker after me. Then, I mean, just crazy coincidences. One time in combat against a hood that, that needs to be named un, un, unnamed, I, we went over there. All we had was golf clubs. We ran up on the dude, and the dude turned the corner. And I was the first one to turn the corner on him, and he turned right around and shot me in the chest. This close. With a 22, I still was 25, he said, pop! And I did like this, huh? 
and I just froze and I never got hit. I mean, then the dude walked up on me at the surplus, hit me six times. This close. Then after that, six months later, the dude took the gun from the homie, shot me in the back with a gun I loaded, 22 long hollow points. Shot me in the back with my own gun. What I'm saying is, I don't have my phone to dial. Me and BJ saw you when you came up to dial. Uh -huh. Yeah, I said, there he is so, right uh, here. What's up, my brother? <laughs>
46. And you? 51. Yeah, yeah you talking yeah, to some yeah, younger older than me. Well, you live across the street. That's what I told school. you. I'm thinking you don't recognize the name. Let me ask you this. Yeah, I'll be 58 January. You moved on 69th Street what year? December 72. What Crips was living in that area at the time? Tookie's uh, stepfather lived down the street. He frequent that spot. Cuse lived around the corner. I lived on 69. He lived on 68. But it was a hood. It was like the West Side Crips hood. It was... It was Magnificent Seven Hood, West Side Crips. So at that time, this was not the North Side? No, I didn't start that till 1980. August 3rd. <coughs> great, great day. So even before that? What, what, it's all, it always was in Shirts now. But that wasn't, that wasn't considered part of the hood? But it wasn't 60 hood. It was anybody's hood. It was like a neutral area. I lived there. It wasn't really it wasn't a gang there. So I used to have to get dressed, iron my iron my uniform all, all morning and shit, and then walk all the way from 69th to 83rd. And I'm like, fuck, man, down the hood a long ass way. I gotta steal a bike, I gotta steal a car, but I gotta get you the 80s. So so I just got tired of walking. I said, fuck it, north side. This is the hood right here. So before 1980, that was a north side ETG hood. Now looking back. I'm trying to figure out why why that didn't become 60 hood because we got Raymond Potts over there, we got Odie Shaw over there, and these are founders of the 60s. So how come that area didn't become rolling 60s? Good question. The question. I just speak the reason it didn't. What? Yeah. Uh, I speak on that. When Raymond Potts in the Magnificent Seven, the Dinka Crips in the Magnificent Seven Crips, we we would we would fight each other. Head up fights in the street. We fight T-ball. We fight with Raymond and them. When when I became Shotgun QT, Raymond Potts asked me. They want they voted me to run the Dinka Crips. They wanted me to run the Dinka Crips because I had already made relations with the West Side Crips. I'd already joined the West Side Crips from our incident with Donald Archie and them. And so when Tookie gave me the keys to start the Crips. I started the first Crips at Harsh Man. When Tookie and them was going to Harsh Man, there was no Crips there. It was just uh, Cafe Boys and Capones. Tookie and them were Capones. The Cafe Boys were the Avenue Hoods, which became the 60 Hood. So the Dinka Crips, when, when, I, when I became the leader of the Dinka Crips, the, the Dinka Crips, when Odie came back out of YA, they voted me out. And they voted Odie in to run because I was fucking up, going to jail, getting in shit all the time. So I wasn't focused, and then plus I was in another set already. Hey, so, Odie, Odie reminded me of Raymond. Yeah, yeah. So Odie Odie was, let me ask you this. When you first met Raymond Potts, when you first met Odell and Odie Shaw, yeah. where were they from? Uh, they were cafe boys. Raymond Potts was cafe boy, too. They were our cafe boys. That them is original 60s though, man. Original, original 60s. See, the Dinka Crips, the Dinka Crips turned in the 60s. There was even some bishops over there. And 60s. the reason why that, that area, that's kind the of crazy reason, because he lived on Dinka in 69. He grew up, he grew up on the west side. Typically lived on 69. That was, that area was still west side Crips. That was considered a strong, west side. A stronghold right there. Because you had my brother, Big Miles, and all of them, they were on the west side. Isn't, isn't, isn't Devil older than you? And, but you're, Johnny Graham. but you're saying you started North Side, but you got an older homie that lived on the North Side. Yeah, yeah. there always were eight trays. See, this, this is what I did. There's always, there always was eight trays who lived down there, but you had to migrate to the hood to go to the hood. Rayford had it in on, 1980, on In 1980, me and Crazy D sat down in Chico and said, look, 79th North, 66 Dick. This is the North Side, 80th. The Manchester South Side. We, we, we tend, everything else is west. Then the little homie said, fuck it. Two years later, back west. Far West. 
everybody creates the side. So, so there's always there are there's always was a trades that lived in these areas. Yeah. But what we did was map it out and put a, a name on it. Now you put North Side A trade instead of just West Side A trade. My, my little me. brother was an A trade. Yeah, little lucky. Right. So, they so, were all. So, they were all. So, so, so my soldiers is North Side. So, so now I'm from, I'm from, I'm from North Side A trades. I'm from, I'm from the FN. We start the ride. For all normally, football, little football. It wasn't even about that, but it was about getting one of the homies free. But here's the thing, on Florence and Normie, so we called it the FNN, Florence and Normie. That was the, that was the flashpoint of the last and the most expensive rebellion in U.S. history, a billion bucks. We burned our own community. We didn't own shit. Somebody climbed on our backs and they were sucking our blood like parasites because the government gave them a loan to buy this shop. And they're getting nasty with our money and our economics and taking our money and taking it back to their hood. And we ain't, all we get is just hurry up by and we get disrespected. And Latasha Harling gets killed. And just all kinds of shit just added up. It wasn't about Rodney King, it was about the fact that these dudes was politically astute enough to say, fuck it. They had football brother handcuffed, and the homie said, fuck that, we gotta take him back. And they started muscling with like 18 pigs. This is before the rebellion. Like an hour before, they get their brother back. At the same time, the verdict comes in. This dude Gates says, all officers come to the stations. So the dude backed up, but the homies thought that they was running from them. So the homies then went to Florence and Normandy to block the street off. Because 77 is right down the street. So it wasn't about racism, it was about blocking this street off from any oncoming, you know, you know artillery from the pig sty. That's what you see on the news them trying to bombard any car that tried to violate that got bombarded there was a part there, there was a particular ethic there it was politically driven one of the grenades i i, I planted and i'm looking on the news and it's the homies i said that's, that's Florence Norman. i see football the whole shot boom i said damn same time next day the american lady named leon Bean, who wrote that book do or die came to see me now I got I got on the cover. I didn't think I was gonna get on the cover. I just took some pictures for her. And they made the cover. But then the last chapter was my her book blew up. She came to see me with an American dude named uh, William Broyles. He wrote Apollo 13 and the gang of other shit. He's a big dude now. Anyway, she brought him to see me. So in in in, 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 in me and her talking, she said, look, here's my book, it's a national bestseller. Is you on the cover? They're my fat ass as well, that Mac 11. I said, that's a fucked up picture. I look like fucking Steven Seagal. I like no it. I, I like that picture. I, I hate that fucking picture. I, anyway, no, I had that picture. Went eight, they went eight for it, right? Here's my point. Here's my point, y'all. That was the first skit out. That was the first book ever written about Crips and Bloods. It came out in 1991. It's called Do or Die, right? Full of one sided information she got from people. I'm the only name they use in there that's real names. Everybody else is under bones in there. They used some old funny ass name. But no, man, fuck, fuck all that. Right? Anyway, national bestseller. But dude who was sitting with her said this, why don't you write your own book? I said, man, I can't write a book, man. I just learned how to read and write, really. Long story short, he said, write me an article. I got a friend in the magazine. He'll publish it for you. Just write an article about the most exciting day of your life. That's all right. Went back to my cell. 25 pages. It was the day I got, I graduated. I joined the hood. I became an addict. I became a murderer and a graduate and a gang member all on the same day and I was 11. And so that was the most exciting day in my life. But I didn't understand the trajectory it had set my spirit. I mean, because I was a regular dude. But when that shit hit me like that, so I started, I wrote that, man. 
And so I gave it to him 25 pages. That fool came back two weeks later and said, man, I got you $10,000 for that. It's coming out in Esquire magazine. I said, what? I just got seven years for a $40 robbery. And you just gave me $10,000 for a fucking 25 page tree to life initiation by my life, written with a fucking pencil. Mm. Let me ask you this, because you wrote this book not as a retired gang member and not when these wars were over. You wrote this book when everything was cracking full-fledged. You didn't have any reservations doing that at that time? No, because what you got to understand about Monster and what people fail to understand is two things. First page you open up when you open up my book is that it says this is a work of nonfiction. Some of the names have been changed to protect the guilty. And that's true. The second thing you have to understand is I wrote that book in 1993. I was talking about shit that happened 20 years before that when I was recruited. And then before that, before I was recruited, everything I talked about had been cleansed, sent to a lawyer. That's why it's been no prosecutions. My book is the only book, probably out of 15, that has never been no prosecutions. Never been nobody called to court. Never been none of my homies that got caught up because of my book and it was the main thing, or it was the thing. None, nowhere. Not from no set. That Buddha market incident? Yeah, that's not the market. I just used that market. Okay. That's so I'm from the, the hills, market. and that's my area. So I had to figure too, that one out. I, I live in Hillcrest. No, no, no. The reason, and the reason I use Buddha market, because <clears throat> When I sent it to the cleanser, who was my attorney, right? Criminal attorney. Hey, <laughs> what? I sent it to, I sent it to the cleanser. Huh? Rewind? I sent the manuscript. No, I wonder what he about to say. I sent the, I sent the manuscript to the attorney so he can cleanse it, right? And um, and he said, you, you know, let's go over this, this to right here. You know, so I did that. I changed it, changed it. One more. We got, we got to clear it up, buddy. Right? Cutting off arms. Mm -hmm. Arm cutting. Okay, now listen, now listen, now listen, now listen, now listen, now listen. Now that. Homegirl got a half right. She got a half wrong. Okay. And that's all I'm saying. I, wouldn't, right? I never I never spoke about it on an interview. I wouldn't even took nowhere near YouTube like she did. But she 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 just got her facts mixed up. Right. She but but here's the thing. That dude was nobody like at that time I was I had just got over being not nobody. You feel me? <laughs> so it wouldn't even matter who he was. He he was young. He was younger than me and I was thinking I was like <coughs> Uh, I, I want I want to get a, I want to get a cutes cutes. How come you're not from a Trey gangster? Because I was the leader of the Dinka Crips. But all that played out when you came home. Your turf is Northside ETG. How come you didn't fall in the fold with the rest of them? Uh, through prison, I was always a magnificent seven crew. Monster, did you ever look at him as an ETG? No, nope, I always looked at him as a, as my elder and the Max Seven. Cause I, I knew the rank system. I paid attention. I paid attention to the minute details. I was, like a, I was like a Scorsese film fucking student. I paid attention to the smallest detail, the minute things about the walk, the talk, the attitude, so I would know what took you was in a bad, bad, bad mood. All it. his brothers turned A-Trey. No, not true. Big Mouse never turned A-Trey. No. Neither, neither, he no, did. He and, 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 and Russell. And Russell. <laughs> Machine Gun Russell. <laughs> Only Russell did that because he was bored. Yeah, he, he was bored. He didn't have to do that. He, had nobody there. he already had his status. He already had his G status. He was already there. He didn't he have to come back. Wanted to hang out with some yeah. hey, What about your cousins? Uh, they were all magnificent seven, one sixty blue. Monster blue, blue and, and and Chucky Madison. Chucky Madison. Chucky was always a magnificent seven. Blue was blue was a bona fide sixty. How did that happen? Because he said he grew up on seventy first with these guys. The well, blue seven, and blue had, never had no territory though. Yeah, it was just, it just existed inside the West Side Crips. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about them having the territory. It was about them being the magnificent seven. Seven good-looking, bodybuilding ass demolition squad, motherfucker. What year did you move over on 68? 1960. What, was that area ran by Terry Godot and the Brims when you first got there? Because that's uh, before Tookie got uh, there. Uh, Terry Godot and them never got to run down there. Terry Godot had a little small street 64. by John Muir Library, and we would go up in there and give him head up fights all the time. So that area was never occupied by Brims at all. Oh yeah, the leader of the Brims, now the uh, treetop, the leader of the Brim before there were Crips over there, before there were Crips, before we called ourselves Crips, there were Brims on 69th, there were Brims on uh, 67. I'm gonna name the Brims over there. Norietta, her brother was a Brim with the like, big lips, like skin Norietta with the big lips what? and narrowed hair. Her big brother was a Brim. 
And once we became Crips, we ran them off. Oh, but, 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 but here's, here's a clarification on that. The Brims were a gang before they were Bloods. Oh, yeah, but they weren't Bloods. They were just Yeah, they were just Brims. <coughs> they were just Brims. Yeah, That's just another brims. thing that youngsters don't really understand. Before Crips, like Oaks Park businessman was Oaks Park businessman yeah, before we put Crip on. Right. Farmer dog, farm dog was farm dog. Grandy was Grandy boys. Yeah. Boot Hill was Boot Hill boys. Yeah. We were already in existence before right. Crips. Oaks Park wasn't flirting around with Or the farmers, huh? They go, they go, no. <laughs> there we go. There we go. No, I told you. This is what I told you. I told you. East side of Compton was basically all Lewis Park before line before any of that on the East side, and they, they want they were trying to force our hand to turn Pyro, and we didn't. From 1969, we was Oaks Park businessman. 71 Oaks Park businessman Compton Crips and Oaks Park boys. About Rose Street. Hey, 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 monster. That's that. Yeah. Two two questions. I'm gonna be both of these guys. Do you remember the first time you met Rockhead? Do you remember the first time you met Cutes? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I, 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 I met Rocky in the county jail just briefly, but then I really seen him and seen him in his natural habitat when I got to prison. I got to do folks. But um, I, I, I already, his, his name was already ringing through the prison system, you know? Were you guys already comrades at the time? Or? Yeah, we all, I was already made. I had got made in county jail. And I knew who he was. I knew who his status was. Uh, but, I, but I knew it was a lot of the internal struggle. You know what I mean? So I knew we, at that point, I didn't know how to extend we was falling apart. But I knew there was something going on, but the homie's name was always coming up as, as you know, one oh, of the two. You, you jumped onto the CCO at the tail end, is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
he already said when he met Rocky. Anyway. No, I'm just saying. As far it was as on toilet. We <laughs> were in <laughs> Folsom prison. <laughs> Rocky and Mike and shit and kiss you out. I want to get Monster and Cutie's corporate perspective on the hood because okay. he, he landed. Yeah. he landed on the north side in '72. Mm -hmm. You landed over there in '68. Sixty. 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 Yeah, nineteen sixty. Who do you give credit to for starting Roman Sixties?